we've had a beautiful couple of weeks in the Balearics and we are heading back to Valencia. So what we thought we might do is um, have a go at bringing up our anchor from the uh, beam and stowing it away like we planned to. So um, this is the first time we're going to try it out so let's hope it all goes well. And there's not too many bits in the way. So first part you're going to talk us through what you're doing? Take off my little R clip which has no safety line on it at the moment so I could easily drop it in the tide. But then in your pocket. That's my pocket. Okay, so you've taken that eye clip off. Yep. Pin comes out. Pin comes out, but it's got a safety line on it. So that's all good. That's all good. It's not falling in the water. Okay. Oh yeah, and this is your little twisty thing that you did. And then it twists and lock on that one. Boom ski. So that was easy enough to do? Yeah. Relatively easy, yeah. You wouldn't want to do it in any Lumpy conditions. conditions. Now we've put the anchor away, I might talk a bit about our carbon wing mast. Um, because I think it's worth mentioning, I'm not sure if we've gone into any detail on it and what we did so far in our videos. Um, this is made of high modulus carbon. Yep, that's a high modulus carbon. And it actually has a bit of history. It is the old rig, rig number 12, did you say? Well, at some stage you said. I think it was rig 11. And it from Team New Zealand's America's Cup. From 2000, 2000 campaign. 2000 campaign. And it was bought by the French and brought over to Valencia for their challenge. Um, in 2007. And was left in Valencia after the cup finished and sat in a, the Team New Zealand boatyard for 15 years and was about to be chopped up and put in the bin and we couldn't let that happen of course so it was actually in loft during the lockdown in Spain we got stuck here in, in Spain didn't we yep. and I made this mainsail out of an old 72 foot delivery main well, Shane, put this together. Not just a 72 footer, a mini maxi for car Lila. <laughs> so it's a pretty substantial boat. Not just any old 72 footer. It was a big main. It was a big main. Took a lot of time to cut it down. Um, we are getting off track because I want to talk about them. I want to talk about the mast. What did you do to it, babe? Because it's sitting on this little mass space here which is a cup and ball arrangement you did an acetal cup uh no it's oil on it's oh that's right oil, oil impregnated nylon but that then sits inside a carbon cup which is all bonded to the bottom of the rig uh, you made that carbon cup thing didn't you put yeah. that in 
yeah. and then we had someone make up the oil on yeah. insert. And then the mask ball itself is actually aluminium. So I didn't go the standard stainless steel route because I knew I was using a, um, a plastic um, cup and my bearing area is quite large so the wear that's going to happen on the ball should be quite low. And it doesn't squeak, does it? No, it doesn't squeak at all. I have set it up so that it can be, have a grease nipple put in and grease put in it. I have got grease in there, um, but that was only when it first went together, the grease in there. Oh, and Harry greased it up a lot before uh, we stuck yeah, it. Harry put plenty of grease in there. Um, and even though it is an oil impregnated nylon, um, to have a little bit of grease in there, makes it a hundred times better. But the actual mask ball itself going to aluminium was quite a substantial weight saving. And um, there was no strength loss because the strength that was required meant that I didn't actually have to go to stainless steel because I made the bit ball quite large. We weren't actually gonna make it rotating to start with, were we? No. So, but because it's such a big section, and you had we decided that it was stiff. We did a bit of a bend test, didn't we? Tried to. <laughs> it sort of, uh, yeah, st stuck it next to the old mast, with, um, propped on yeah. either yeah. end, and then sort of jumped in the middle and saw, tried yeah, to measure with, how much we the, could the deflect very, it. Very ca calibrated um, chain test weight. Um. <laughs> Hang off this, boys. Yeah. Um, we couldn't get it to bend much, so we ran a spreaderless section. And then because the section is so large, it is quite a big, big chunk of carbon there. We thought it would be better to um, be able to rotate that. Yeah. Um, so then that's where you made your handlebars, your rotation spanner, uh, which we're still tweaking, aren't you? Oh uh, yeah, I've still got to make the modifications on the deck to uh, have the purchase system for the wings and I'll actually just come back to cam cleats so that I don't take up the extra clutches in my clutch bank here. Uh, we've got limited. I've only got nine. Um, and I've got um, other things I want to do with them. And we did end up trying to put some lowers on it, haven't we? We have some lowers on. Um, but they also need looking at because those chain plates are yeah. in need of attention. But yeah, it's a lovely stiff mast and it can hold our great big square top made because that's two meters at the top very roachy and our code zero and the oh, code there. zero it's happy with um we'd never have flown that code zero oh mask we ripped the top straight off it yeah there was a there was a lot of inversion just when we were flying that little kite yeah and that wasn't even at the very oh no it was at the top yeah okay the whole top was bending yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this one with scary. the code zero fully wicked up, I get a little bit of bending in the top, but not enough to scare the pants off me. Repurpose the gooseneck too. That's yeah. look at the look at the state of that thing. Yeah. That's a piece of hardware. Big, big, big piece of kit. That's um, that's an old cut boat gooseneck. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna rip that bad boy out in a hurry. There were some pretty impressive bits of engineering on this, I have to say. That's aluminium, that's aluminium, that's titanium, all the bolts are titanium, likewise all the bolts uh, in the track of titanium. The pad eye down the bottom here, that's titanium. That was salvaged off it too, right? Yeah. All that... the track was, we reused the track. Yeah. We did have a bit of a problem that we had to get find, we had to buy all the um, cars for the main. Yeah, trying to find a car to suit the track that was attached to the yeah, mask that, that was a bit, a bit of a... Expensive. Tricky. So the original track profile 
we think was um Fredrickson. Fredrickson. There you go. Well done. Um you put these exit holes in there. Yeah. You? Yeah. So there's a Oh, because um, this was too here. long, wasn't it? We have <laughs> What's that? The mast. But the mast was too long. You yeah. had to chop it down. You had to chop it to size. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a few meters got chopped off. Because we're not 33 meters of mast. Um, so we had to chop it to size. Yeah. And I had to chop it so that I could utilize the hound's position. So the hound's position of the actual original cut boat had lots of reinforcing already in it and I wanted to use all that reinforcing for where I attached the, our new our new four stay and our uh, um, side stays so I picked up on the old spreader spreader root uh, patches which also had a tie bar through them so wouldn't pull the rig apart um, the four stay I picked up well, I might have made a new hole for the four stay, I think, but it was still in part of the original four stay um, attachment arrangement area. So there's heaps and heaps, heaps of um, carbon in behind it. Um, and also at the hounds there, the mast starts to taper from the full cord um, length down, tapers a little bit to the mast end. So it was quite important to actually centre the mast around that area. So I ended up making the tip of the mast, from making all the measurements from the hounds, from the hounds. You probably can't see, but there's some pretty impressive kit at the very top. Um, BNG wind one, but just a stock standard sticky out the front one. The actual instrument itself um, is the same on the cheap cheaper 450 euro wand that we bought versus the big carbon vertical ones um, and I managed to find um, an old carbon wind one that had a vertical carbon wind one that had an old broken um, sender uh, electrical unit on the end of it so I pulled apart my brand new BNG one and took the old, uh, took off the aluminium tube that it came with, took it off from that, cut the wires, um, removed the the broken sensor from the, the vertical wind one, then glued, or joined the wire, made the wire extension, uh, making sure that I kept all the NMEA plugs down the bottom and all the joins were then meant to be all inside and sealed and all the rest of it. Glued the new sensor on and then, um, yeah, then refurbished the actual carbon wand, sanded it and clear coated it and made it all nice. And it's your favorite bit, isn't it? Let's see if I can get it's, it. It's the crown and glory of the uh, rig. You do love it. I hope like hell we never get a lightning strike because, um, <laughs> To replace that is um, bloody expensive. Yeah. been a hole in my pocket. <laughs> Don't let it touch the bin, Dad. Hey, Mum, where does the scene Davy Jones locker come from? I don't know. Where does it? I don't know. Oh, no, it's older than the parts of the Caribbean. And there you have it.
took it down. So, back out on easy. the beam.